Let me talk about one issue that I think is critical that's under consideration by the Department of Education when it comes to these for-profit colleges. Mandatory arbitration clauses. You're going to find at for-profit colleges and at virtually no other college a little paragraph stuck in that loan agreement, stuck in your enrollment contract, which says that if you have any grievance with that for-profit school, if you think they deceived you, defrauded you, lied to you, if you think that you got in debt for a promised degree that was going to lead to a job, you can't plead your case in court when you sign this agreement. You have to go to mandatory arbitration. Mandatory arbitration, for those not familiar with it, is a closed-door process. And the company, the school in this case, sets the standards about who will decide your fate and whether anything about what happened to you ever becomes public. Why do the for-profit schools do this? They don't want to be taken to court. No company does. They certainly don't want to face a class action lawsuit by the students who've been defrauded by these for-profit schools. And they certainly don't want the Department of Education to know that a certain number of students at a for-profit school have a grievance with the way they're treated. So they come up with these mandatory arbitration clause, documents the students have to sign to go to class. Students, by and large, don't even see them. They're buried in a document. And if they did, would find it hard to even explain. These clauses require students to give up their right to a day in court. It means, for example, that if a student is misled or deceived by the school's advertising website, the student goes into debt, then can't find the job, or can't qualify for a job that they promised you could, you don't get a day in court. Instead, the student is forced into the secret arbitration proceeding where the deck's stacked against them. It allows students to avoid, pardon me, it allows schools to avoid accountability for mis misconduct. It prevents prospective students from knowing that there were an awful lot of other students at the same school that had the same bad experience. It's fine for schools to give students the choice of arbitration, but to say it's mandatory, you have no other choice, that's wrong. Mandatory arbitration clauses are not used by legitimate not-for-profit colleges and universities. Not-for-profit colleges, public and private, are comfortable with being held accountable to the students. They don't require mandatory arbitration for the students to sign up for classes. The Association of Public Land Grant Universities, the National Association of Independent Colleges and Universities, the Association of Community College Trustees, the American Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers, they've all confirmed what I just said. But unfortunately, mandatory arbitration clauses or a hallmark of the for-profit college industry, used by nearly all major companies. DeVry, University of Phoenix, ITT Tech, just to name a few. These same clauses were used by a for-profit school called Corinthian. You might have heard of that one because it went bankrupt. What happens when a for-profit college goes bankrupt? They've received the money through the student from the federal government. They've received all those Pell Grants. They've received the money for government loans. And now they are officially out of business. Where does that leave the student? Well, we give them a pretty tough choice. First choice, keep the credit hours you earned at the for-profit school and transfer to another for-profit school. Is that worth the effort? Well, the student has to decide. Or drop those credit hours at the for-profit school and drop your loan. You don't have to pay it back. Who loses in that deal? Taxpayers. The taxpayers who sent thousands of dollars to these worthless for-profit schools. So I'm hoping the Department of Education will promulgate a rule which protects students and their families when it comes to these for-profit schools. There's one last thing I want to say about college loans, and it probably is the most important thing. If you borrow money for a car or a home, or a piece of property somewhere, or to buy some goods, and then fall on hard times. Somebody in the family gets sick, big medical bills, lose a job, a divorce, and you are forced into bankruptcy court to clear your debts. You're going to find out if you have a student loan, you can't discharge a student loan in bankruptcy. It means, frankly, it's with you for a lifetime. 
So when grandma decides to co-sign her granddaughter's college loan and her granddaughter defaults on the loan, the collection agency calls her grandmother. We've got cases that have been reported where grandmothers have their social security checks basically garnished to pay off the granddaughter's student loan. It's a debt, frankly, that'll be with you for a lifetime. And that's why this conversation is so important. A few years ago, the for-profit colleges and universities ended up with the same treatment as every other college and university, and they too, when it comes to student debt, have their investment protected because the student cannot discharge it in bankruptcy. I think the Department of Education has the authority to clean this up. I ask unanimous consent to submit for the record a legal analysis put together by Public Citizen outlining this authority. Without objection. Mr. President, countless veterans groups, consumer advocates, legal aid lawyers, and student organizations support a full ban on mandatory arbitration clauses in higher education. I hope the Department of Education responds to this. I hope that they have the resolve and the will, the political will, to get this done. It's sad when students end up with a good diploma and a ton of debt. It is unforgivable for us to be complicit when students end up with a ton of debt and a worthless diploma from a for-profit college and university.